problems with Bernac Vulcan model steam engines part 2, finding a suitable small spring to repair two old Bernac safety valves, fitting some heat insulation in the firebox area, filling the burner with methylated spirits, then it is time for a steam test in the next episode. Here are the two Bernac safety valves that I have. I was a bit confused why the bottom one looked different to the top one. The bottom safety valve was covered in rust and I didn't realise that part of it was the original rubber washer and not part of the casting. This was obvious when I removed it using a sharp Stanley knife and chopped it into two pieces. In this clip you can see exactly what it is, it's an old piece of perished rubber. I'm not going to reuse this, I'll use a silicone o-ring. The first thing I need to do is find a suitable spring that's just the right gauge to allow the safety valve to work. If the spring is too stiff, then it will blow off at too high a pressure, and if it's too weak, it will blow off all the time. There are two problems with this spring. One is it's too heavy duty for the job, and the other is it's larger than the hole in the boiler. I had a look in my box of springs and found a smaller spring. Here it is, but I still think it's a bit strong for a small steam toy. I need to find a spring that is just a little bit thinner gauge than this one. Let me think, where will I find one of those? I know, I look in my box of springs that used to be a box of diodes, but I threw the diodes away because I didn't need them, and now it's full of small springs. Here they are. I rummaged around in this box of springs and then I found the ideal solution. Not only was it the correct gauge and the correct diameter, it was long enough to cut the spring in half to make two safety valve springs which will be fine for the two safety valves that I'm repairing. I think it's time to clean up the body of the safety valve before I go any further. The surface needs to be good enough so that the o-ring can create a steam tight seal. Here I'm fitting the o-ring to one end and at the other end I'm fitting the spring retainer. And now as you can see I have two Bernac safety valves. One is slightly different to the other but it doesn't matter they will both fit. The first safety valve at the top of this image is the one that came with the first Bernac Vulcan that I bought and it had been brutalised with a pair of pliers so I re-nailed it, but it doesn't look as good as the current one. This O-ring is the one I'm going to fit around the part of the safety valve where it screws into the boiler. I have nothing against the red colour of the silicone O-rings, but you can get too much of a good thing. Here I'm testing the functionality of the valve, and it feels OK. It's time now to turn my attention to the burner. When I bought the first Bernac Vulcan, it was a bit of a mess and I was looking around YouTube to see what the arrangement was for the safety valve because the one that came with it made no sense. And I noticed that on quite a few of these steam engines the firebox area at the back was a bit burnt and didn't look too good. The lacquer on this particular Bernac Vulcan is in quite good order so I don't want to burn this. A simple logical solution is to line the firebox area with some heat resistant material which is what I'm doing here. This heat insulation, by the way, is not asbestos. It's the modern equivalent. I think it's made from a byproduct of China clay. Time to remove the compressed air fitting and fit the safety valve, just to make sure it fits OK, really. As you can see, the cleaned up safety valve is a bit of an improvement and it fits perfectly. Immediately, I remove the safety valve and put the funnel in its place. This is an original Bernac funnel, not to be confused with the little red plastic Mamod ones, or the slightly larger Willesco type. I'm filling the boiler with spring water, which may not be the best idea, but I can't be bothered using distilled water, as it's so easy to clean out the boilers when they get furred up. The bottle is more or less the same diameter as the boiler, so I could estimate how much water was putting in there because I can't see much through the water gauge. I need to give this some attention. Before refitting the safety valve, as you've just seen, I dipped my screwdriver into the hole, and I think I've probably overfilled it, but it doesn't really matter. Here I'm refitting the chimney, and now, trying to contain my excitement, it's over to the spirit burner. 
First of all, I remove one part of the wick, the cleaner part. The other part of the wick is down into the burner and wound around inside. This is what I'm going to put in the burner. It is methylated spirits. And this is what you must use. Do not use kerosene, paraffin or anything like that. It doesn't burn clean enough. I overfilled the burner slightly using the Burnack funnel. But it was nothing that a cloth wouldn't put right and the bench looks a bit cleaner now. This next bit is very important. Open a window or two windows or even a door. You do need plenty of ventilation. After a while the smell from these spirit burners is quite awful. With the window open I lit the burner and immediately placed it underneath the boiler in the firebox. Which to my surprise was a strangely satisfying thing to do. I really do think I need to get out more. Here's an interesting shot. It's the burner burning inside the firebox, creating a surprising amount of heat. After a while the entire engine gets hot, but almost immediately you put the burner in the firebox, the chimney gets extremely hot. An obvious health and safety warning, do not touch the chimney when the burner is lit. I've overfilled this boiler because I couldn't see the water level in the water gauge. More about this in the next episode. Because the boiler was overfilled, it took quite a long time to raise steam. I'll show the raising of the steam and quite a lot of other things in the next episode. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.